Hello world, this is Kai. Who else would it be, right? Well, let's continue our um, our SES configuration. Now we want to receive emails because if we go back to our email over here, we had a failure to reply over here whenever we try to say something like, say something, I'm giving up on you. And we send it, we're going to get a mailer domain notice that this um, is not successfully going through to the email address. So there you go. It's saying, hey, um, we don't know what's up with this, but there's no MX record, so you're kind of crazy for trying to send something to that email address. So let's create, let's create the MX record first, might as well. So I still have this endpoint set up over here, or um, open. So you can just look up... Uh, I don't know, like SES endpoints, and you'll get this document to open up over here. And because I'm using the US West 2 region, and again, you know this because click the region list over here, and SES is only available in three regions at the moment, and we have it open. I'm going to go back to Route 53. So if you went to Route 53, you would click that hosted zone that you want to configure this MX record set for. I'm going to create this and we're going to call it MX and we're going to put the endpoint in there and now you have to have it proceed with a um, numerical value and I think it's an increment of 10 so if you wanted to put another server receiving server so like US East 1 for instance then you would put a different numerical value or if you had another server altogether like zoho.com or something you would put it here followed by a different numerical value and because 10 is a lower number it's going to take precedence over that 20 but we're going to just leave it as 10 for now and we're going to change the TTL for one minute at the moment and always remember to change that like I'm sure these oh, these are aliases so that's fine so Change this to 60 seconds so it propagates fairly quickly and you can change it back later. Um, let's see. Now back in SES, as per the documentation, you're going to have to create a receipt rule. So we'll go over here to the rule set. We'll create, let me delete this one real quick. So we can do it from scratch. And create a rule set and we're going to call it SES um, Wondering Hack. Receiving rule. I'm going to just copy this because I'm going to name my bucket that. So I'm going to click into that rule set. We're going to create a rule. We will add a recipient later because we're going to want this rule to pertain specifically to that contact at Wondering Hack email address. So we're going to have it go to S3 for now. Um, the S3 bucket, we're going to make one and we're going to call it. Uh, let's see, received. And we're going to add a prefix here because we're going to want this to be for just that email address. So this is going to create a new directory in S3. And let's open up S3 preemptively so we can take a look at what's going on here. So we're going to pretty much create a bucket, creating this S3 bucket, creating it. That sucker is created. So now if you go to S3, you can see it's created. And we're not going to encrypt the message for now. We're going to leave it as is. We're going to leave the SNS topic as is, but we can have other, we can take advantage of this um, SNS service to forward emails or send us some other sort of notification whenever this email address gets an email. So we're going to go to next step. And I'm not sure if I said this before, but you can only receive emails through S3 at the moment. We can try to hack that and figure out a different way of doing that in the future. So the rule name is just going to be contact SES receive um, wondering hack contact SES receive. We're going to leave it as enabled so we can use this rule right off the bat. For now, we're not going to require TLS. Um, we are going to enable the span and virus scanning. And rule set, it's part of that rule set. And we're going to leave that all as is, and we're going to create a rule. And then you have to go over here back to your rule sets. 
we're going to click this rule set right here and we're going to set it as the active rule set and we're going to click set active. So now let's go take a look at this S3 bucket. It's created that subdirectory for us over here and it sent us a little notification. We can download it. We can download it. And when you open it up, it's simply going to say, hey, man, someone's trying to create a, um, a rule over here to allow you to receive SES emails to this bucket. Okay, but it says that you're going to have to figure the configure, finish the configuration. Now, because I created this through SES, if we go to permissions over here and take a look at the, uh, let's see the permissions. Oh, go, sorry, we're going to go to the, the root of the bucket. We're going to look at the permissions. We should have a bucket policy already created, which is going to allow SES to put objects inside of this bucket over here in all of the subdirectories. So this is perfect. Should be okay now if we send an email. Sorry. Um, going to go back to this email that we sent. And we're going to reply active now, right? So let's check this bucket again. And now we've received the email right here. So there's two things that we can do. We can download it. And we can take a look at it in this text editor. So if you go down and you can look at this right here, which says active now for right. This looks disgusting to me. We could probably copy this right here, go into a text editor like Sublime, create a new one, save this on the desktop as test.html, and we'll put it on the desktop. Then open up your files. It's a little convoluted, I understand. And then open that with Google Chrome. Let's take a look at it. Active now, right? So this is what we've received. And you can see all the headers and all that information there. Or if you follow the documentation, it says if you change the extension to, I thought it, I think it was, uh, let's see. View the email over here. I think if you go to the documentation and you change the extension to .eml, so let's take a look at that download. Change the extension to .eml. Add the extension. Now let's try to open it with Thunderbird. Now we can view that right here. So this is a little less than ideal. Um, in the coming episodes, I'll try to think of a way to kind of, you know, hack this and make it more streamlined so we don't have to go through that process. So perhaps we can create a Lambda rule that'll give it the correct extension and um, we can download it as an email or we can maybe just create a website that'll go into S3 and open up these emails. And that might be a little bit more difficult, but hey, that just leaves room for some opportunity. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Um, again, subscribe, stay tuned. We'll be bringing some more.